All right, today we're talking about vulnerability and intimacy. Let's get into it. So I'm going back to the self, shame, and costume diagram. So if we're trying to reach intimacy, and at the end of the day, connection, the costume is the enemy of intimacy. So we have to, at the end of the day, take off the costume and deal with the shame. So let's go over here. A costume to protect our shame. That's what the purpose of the costume is. Protect us from pain, right? And a costume can be the enemy of intimacy because no one gets inside to ourself. And we can't have intimacy with the costume and shame. Take off the costume and deal with the shame. Connections can't happen without intimacy. Intimacy can't happen with a costume. A costume doesn't exist without shame. And God cannot bless who I pretend to be. Okay? So with that concept, let's go ahead and go over here. We got a little math equation a bit. So if we're trying to reach connection, right? We have intimacy plus vulnerability. That's what connection equals. All right? And so intimacy and vulnerability cannot equal costume plus shame plus self. Intimacy and vulnerability equals costume, shame, crossed out, plus the self. So intimacy and vulnerability equals the self. So we have a few different ways we can go with the self. I'm going to go to the left first. Invulnerability. This person is very prideful and they do not open up because of a fear of intimacy, which leads to a fear of pain, a fear of the shame. So they put a very big costume on and do not let anyone in. What happens to that person? A few different things. In a godly way, 416, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Then what leads is isolation. What comes from isolation is loneliness. And then you might uh, have this phenomenon, which is you can be around people yet be lonely. And that's why, and that's, and the reason for that is no one gets access to the self, the self. So you just have this thick costume that no one gets into and you're staying on your own island where no one can hurt you, but no one can be intimate with you. Let's go ahead and go over here to the exposed. Being exposed completely is unwise because some people are out to get you. You can't give everyone access to yourself. Yourself is valuable. So this can lead to actually more shame and actually even going over to this area some people will be in an exposed state and go to invulnerability because there is too much pain. But if you look at Matthew 7, 6, it says, do not waste what is holy on unholy. Keep that in mind when you're on this side. All right, but we're trying to get over here to vulnerability with boundaries. This is the happy medium, right? So how do we do this though? There's a couple different ways we accomplish this. So the first way, of course, is take refuge in the Lord. And so in Psalms 118.8, it says, It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust humans. But the Lord also calls us to be transparent with some people. Other people, he calls for more boundaries. And so listening to the Lord at the end of the day is where we get that happy medium. Because we have full trust in him. We are imperfect. He is not. He is perfection. Then we have over here, the me too, is that mutual exchange. If I say I struggle with greed and someone says, oh yeah, me too, you just exchanged vulnerabilities. If you look at a vulnerability as a gun and when I'm vulnerable to someone, I give someone a gun. Now they have power over me and they can hurt me with that gun. But with a me, me too mutual exchange, both guns are handed to both parties and now no one has more power over the other. That's why mutual exchange is very favorable. If you look at Galatians 2 that says, carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. All right, so I hope this was informative. Leave your thoughts.